Hello and welcome back. Today's video tackles chapter 6 of the course, which discusses how to deal with risk professionally. The first thing to ask ourselves is, what is risk? How does it exist in a professional environment and how to identify it? Risk is a normal part of life and consequently a normal part of engineering and technological progress. When risk is mentioned, it usually represents the likelihood or probability of something bad happening. The opposite of risk is safety, and that is why safety protocols are an integral part of engineering and they are enforced with high precision. Taking risks is an integral part of progress. If a humanity avoids taking risks, humanity will not progress. But to be safe, it is a good idea to make sure that these risks are always well studied and calculated. One measure of risk is the magnitude of harm. The magnitude of harm represents a value of the negative impact if the risky scenario occurred. For example, a new garbage dump site is open near a village of 2,000 people. This dump site holds a spill risk of 2%. If the spill occurs, it will cause health issues for all the citizens in that area. Then, the magnitude of harm is 2,000 individuals plus their health bills due to the diseases created by the spill. But harm is not only physical. Impacting any person's life negatively is considered harm, like limiting a person's freedom. It is highly recommended to be very precise when measuring harm. This leads us to the question of when is it okay to take a risk? Generally, it is okay to take a risk if that risk is an acceptable one. An acceptable risk is a risk whose probability of benefit multiplied by the magnitude of that benefit is greater than the probability of harm times the magnitude of that harm. Of course, keeping in mind that some lines cannot be crossed, like putting people's lives at risk. When rolling out new products and concepts for people to try, it is highly important to have their free and informed consent. Free and informed consent means that the individual is aware of the risks and accepts them. For a consent to be free and informed, it must have three criteria. First, a person must have free will and not be forced to consent. Second, all the risks and required information must be provided for the individual. Finally, a person must be sane, rational, and has the mental maturity and capacity to make use of all the given information and then make a decision. Putting all three criteria together, we get free and informed consent. Accordingly, it is important to provide information properly to the public. The best practices in giving information to the public are to be as clear and precise as possible. Choose your words in a manner that does not insinuate panic. Phrase your words in a trustworthy manner, as the public might be wary of experts. Collaborate with the government to comprehend the full extent of the risk and check with the governing engineering bodies for ideas and solutions. When a professional is negligent in a manner that inflicts harm onto others, like forgetting to inform them of certain risks, for example, tort law comes into action. Tort law protects people from the malpractice of other people, such as wrongful deaths, for example. Check its details in the attached video. Whenever we are dealing with something that holds risk, it is important to apply what we have learned in Chapter 4. Technology is great, but we must always test it very rigorously to make sure we account for all dangers. We must always keep the public informed of the risks at hand. And we should always see other points of view to check if we have missed anything. We have reached the end of chapter 6. It has been short and sweet and we discussed risk in engineering and how to deal with it. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about engineers and organizations. What is their role and how should they behave?